What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. And this one is a bit of a different video today. I'm obviously here at my desk instead of where I normally sit, but I'm here because I needed the desk space for something kind of special. Uh, if you've watched this channel in the past, you know that one of the things I love doing is collecting old Apple products and then reviewing them or just making videos about them doing something weird. Uh, I did an entire restoration series on a 2008 aluminum MacBook. I've talked about the PowerBook G4, the little 12 inch guy. And I even did a video on using the, the 1999 iBook G3 clamshell in 2023, which was, well, I won't spoil it. Go watch the video. But when I look for these products, one of the first things I do is I shop locally. I try to go to local stores like pawn shops, thrift stores, all that kind of stuff, Goodwill. And I do that because I am a huge advocate for supporting local businesses. It's a good thing to do, especially after the pandemic. They are dying for your business. But you might also just find something you never expected to find there. And that's exactly what happened when I went to a local place called Gold and Silver Exchange. Uh, they're not a sponsor of this video or anything, but I wanna shout them out because I found something that I never thought I would find locally. And that is this little guy here. This here is a second generation iPod shuffle still in its box. And that's not a big deal, but what makes it a big deal for me is the fact that it's still in its box that is completely factory sealed. And I'm sure some of you are like, okay, cool, it's an iPod shuffle. It's like the cheapest iPod that Apple ever made. But this one's kind of special to me because this was actually the first Apple product that I personally ever owned. I actually still have it here. This is my original iPod shuffle. I'll hold it down here so you can see it. This is my first iPod shuffle. And unfortunately, it is dead. I don't know what happened. Maybe the battery went bad or something like that. But this thing for me holds so many good memories. I got it for Christmas and that same year after Christmas, me and my family, we all went to Disney World. So on the plane, I was listening to this. It was my first Apple product. My parents had all had iPods before me. My dad and my mom both had the iPod Classic and it wasn't even the Classic at the time. It was just the iPod. But this for me was so special. And even if it's dead, I'm gonna keep it forever because it's got a little inscription on the back uh, when you could do the uh, etchings or the, uh, the engravings and it says, Garrett's Shuffle, keep off. Uh, it's just a huge, 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 like just nostalgia wave for me every time I pick this up. And since then I've collected other iPod shuffles. They've all been opened. Uh, this one's actually my sister's original iPod shuffle. And I have a friend of mine who's actually looking for his because his still has the cap at the bottom, which I have long since lost. Uh, I have the one that nobody talks about. Uh, this little guy here is uh, not great. There's no buttons. You have to have Apple's specific headphones to make this work, which I think are actually gonna be in here. So maybe I can actually use this with the headphones. And then I have the very last iPod shuffle that they ever made. Uh, this thing is, it's fine. Uh, it was uh, the last sort of cost cutter one. And one of the issues that you had with it was that you would press the button for the clip or well, press it for the clip. And because they made it into a square, you would hit the back button. Whereas these had that extra extension on the one side past the rewind play pause circle. So you could actually click it without clicking buttons or open the thing without pressing buttons. I'm rambling because I'm really excited and I wanna get into this. So without further ado, let's open us a brand new 2007 second gen iPod shuffle all the way in 2024. Oh, let's get into it. Oh, it's so wild. They've got the peel here and oh man. All right, here we go. We're gonna peel it open for the first time. Oh man. Oh wow, that is some hardcore tape. I mean, it makes sense. It's almost a decade old. Oh, and the value is gone. All righty. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, and it's just, it looks untouched. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. There's no engraving on it either, so that's good. There's no engraving, so... It is purple, it wouldn't be my first choice in color. I would have gone for the silver, obviously, but let's, oh, it's not tape. It's just uh, some folded plastic that probably is never gonna fold that way again. Okay, got the plastic tab and then we can pull this little guy out. Oh, look at that. That, oh, that is so cool. Oh, the hinge. The hinge feels so much better than mine because it's never been used. The buttons are 
nice and clicky. I guarantee there's no battery. Yeah, there's no battery. It's not gonna light up, which I actually have something that we're going to use with this in a minute. Um, so that's gonna be fun. It's another thing I bought from Gold and Silver Exchange uh, just today, a day of recording. So I'm gonna set this to the side and we're gonna go in here and see what else is in the box. Oh, come on, come on, don't, come on, there we go. Oh, oh, look at this. So we have our instructions and the quick start guide all still completely wrapped up. Oh my God, look at these little, I forgot these came with little, little mini Apple stickers. Oh, that's so freaking cool. Oh my God, those are the tiniest, those are the tiniest Apple stickers I think I have ever seen. I didn't remember that they came with that. That's, no, I do remember they came with that because I put one of them on my first car, which was a 2001 Plymouth Neon. Uh, so yes. So next we have the instructions on how to use this. So we can volume up, uh, blink if preset limit is reached. Oh, cause you can do, um, volume limiters on these things because consistent volume just being taken for granted was not a thing back in the day so you could set certain volume limits so it will flash at you if you've hit the maximum uh pause blinks for up to a minute what does that mean blinks? oh that's right you would play and it would go solid green for like a couple sec it says it right here green for two seconds and then if you pause it will flash green at you for two minutes, or one minute, sorry, uh, to let you know that it's paused. And then you have track forward, track back, volume up, volume down, and obviously play pause. Uh, you have two options at the bottom for switches. You have volume, or uh, why did I say volume? <laughs> you have shuffle, because it's an iPod shuffle. And then you have the just play in order. And I remember, when I would get sick of guessing songs, I would just kind of play it in order. And I got to a point where I basically had the order of the songs that I put on here memorized. So that's kind of cool. And oh man, those switches feel so good. They've never been, they've never been used. Mine feel, I mean, to their credit, they don't feel bad, but they don't feel, they don't feel as nice as this one. And there's a texture. There's like a rough texture to the buttons or the uh, play or not play pause, but the fast forward rewind. I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm like stumbling over my words. This thing's just, oh, I'm getting hit with like such a wave of nostalgia. This thing feels so great. And actually let's, yeah, it smells like old, uh, like old Apple packaging, which doesn't mean it smells bad. It's just different. Download and install iTunes. <laughs> yeah, cause that was a thing back in the day. Uh, download and install iTunes, get more music on the iTunes store. Uh, let's see, you can place the shuffle on the dock securely. Make sure it's secure. Actually, funnily enough, I do think I have one of these old docks, but I wanna use the cable that it comes with because that's that's way cooler. Um, oh yeah, because it the dock uses, yeah, because there's, I don't know why it didn't even click for me. Yeah, these did not have a USB port past the first generation, which was just basically a thumb drive that you plugged in and it just had a USB port on the end. Now these actually went through the headphone jack. Uh, another reason to show how versatile the headphone jack is, even though Apple got rid of it because it's old tech. Anyway, don't let me rant about that. I'm gonna try my best to put everything back the way it was, minus the headphones, because if I remember correctly, this comes with the headphones that, uh, that Apple would rather you forget about. This is before ear pods. The old, I think they were just called Apple headphones. Oh, oh shoot. Um, okay, so yes, those we're gonna we're gonna try these in a minute. This I oh my god, I forgot this comes with the dock. They they mm, that is so cool. So I guess, because I don't remember exactly, but I guess that they had the dock with the second gen iPods because this was the first time they did everything through the headphone jack. And then with subsequent generations after that. Uh, they switched to just uh, just using, uh, hold on, I think I have one of those cables, I'll be right back. So yeah, after, I guess after the second generation when the whole dock thing was not a fad anymore, 
they started selling these, and I guess this was also the cable that came with them because it's just the cable and a USB end. There's no fancy dock or anything, so yeah. Also, forgive how dirty this box is. I got it from a trash can when I worked at Best Buy because it still had the cable in it, and I'm a dirty hoarder, so. Okay, so these, <laughs> these are gonna get tried out as soon as I get some music on this. So the first thing I wanna do is just make sure it works and then I'll load music in from my trusty old Mac Studio. But first, I just wanna make sure it works and I'm gonna do it right here on camera with something else that I got from the same place that I bought this from, from us, Gold and Silver Exchange. So let me grab that real quick. So this is the other thing that I got from Gold and Silver Exchange. This is a 2015 11-inch MacBook Air. And this was a MacBook Air that I've always kind of wanted. I'm a huge fan of like old school, smaller Macs. And uh, this thing is just so cool. So I'm gonna get the screen recording started and then we are going to dive right in and try this iPod out. Hey, so just hopping in here real quick. So fun fact for this section where I recorded the whole screen and set the whole iPod up there. Um, the MacBook Air's screen recorder failed. So it's a good good start to to owning a MacBook Air. Uh, screen recording on Mac OS is so hit or miss, and I forgot that Monterey is like one of the worst. So um, enjoy this sort of blind bit. Um, I'll just, I'm describing it on camera and that's about it. Yeah. There we go. All right, so now, oh, this is so exciting. So let's go ahead and plug in the dock, this really cool dock. I forgot that they came with. So we'll plug the dock in. We're gonna go ahead and put the iPod. Actually, let me open up. Uh, I'm pretty sure it comes up in Finder now. So we'll open up Finder. All right, so here we go. Let's make sure we get it lined up right. And down on the dock, we've got a light. Come on. We've got the light. It's it's blipping. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Oh no. It's 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 struggling. There's a solid. Oh, there's a solid flash. These docks are notorious for kind of being a, a little a little flaky. So let's, let's try that again. Oh no, this dock. Oh, there it is. There it is. Click on iPod. Sync your iPod. This is, it's a brand new iPod screen. Look at this. Sync your iPod and it's 1.1 gigabytes. So we actually got more than what we paid for. That's cool. Cause this is, this is just a, uh, a little, this is a one gigabyte model. So uh, <laughs> we got more than what we paid for. Oh, this is taking me so far back. The old terms and conditions, you gotta love it, so. And there it is. Let's check for updates and see if there's any updates. So check for updates. There's an update, we are on, okay, so hold on, I'm gonna cancel this, what version? We're on version 1.0.3, which I think is probably the launch one. I would assume that 1.0 was the original, oh this actually doesn't show what the original OS was. So the latest version is 1.0.4, which is one up from this. So let's go ahead and what is this? Enhanced iPod support for two gigabyte model and bug fixes. So we'll definitely wanna do that and agree. Well, either way, we know that it works. I'm gonna go find the proper cable for it. And um, yeah, I will be back once I have some music loaded into it so we can try out these headphones. It'll probably be like, God knows how long for me to actually get music on this thing, but for you, it's gonna be, well, the very next cut. Holy shit, that took so much longer than it should have. I had to get a stubby cable, which then didn't work, because I finally found it, plugged it into the Mac Studio, it didn't work. Um, and then when I did finally just hook the dock to the Mac Studio, it worked, but it wouldn't transfer the, the music over for some reason. So then I moved the music onto my little transfer SSD, put it on the MacBook Air, 
and plugged everything in and then it transferred. And then when I was trying to move the screen recording, which you already know this now because the magic of, of video editing, when I went to move the screen recording I did of this initially firing up, for some reason it just didn't save the screen recording. So yeah, sorry about that awkward blank bit, but again, I probably put a little card in front of it so you already know. Anyway, with all of that done, the iPod is now ejected, or I think I'm ejecting it now, and I'm going to now take these little guys and finally open them up, and I guess we'll see what happens. Good lord, look how tight these things were wound up in there. No wonder these cables frayed so quickly. They were already packed for failure. Come on. Oh, don't do that. Oh, this packaging. It's cool to unpack, but it's a nightmare to open up afterwards. You gotta be kidding me. This video went from like super excited at the start to now just like losing my patience. Okay, so nothing else inside. We're done with this. Okay, enough faffing about. Let's go ahead and try. Oh, these are not, these are not comfortable. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, and that's, that's good for them. That's real good for them. They don't even contour to your ears. Oh no. Oh no. I put songs on here that I'm super familiar with. So let's, uh, do we have power? I assume so. Let's hit play. Oh, what is, what does this mean? Oh, Blink's 10 sec. Okay, firmware. Oh, firmware damaged. Oh no, I'm gonna have to restore. I'm gonna have to restore this thing. I'm gonna have to restore this. Um, but for now, um, I guess I am just gonna have to restore this because I don't have anything else with a freaking headphone jack. But I will say right off the bat, these are not these are not comfortable headphones, and they've already got. My ears are pretty clean, and these have already gotten goop on them just because they pick up everything. Anyway, I'll be back again when I finish restoring this stupid thing. Now I'm losing my patience. It's so cool, but this is what happens. This is the gamble you take when you play with old devices. Later that same evening. If it actually ended up being this easy, I'm gonna be so pissed off. Uh, obviously I'm not in my recording space. Wonder why that is. Well, that would happen to be because I hooked it up to my PC. <sighs> Sure enough, right there it is. And if I go and I click on it, look at that. Ignore the flash pointing at the screen. Why the flash turn on? Yeah, look at that. Came right up and I'm gonna just eject it now and hope it shows up on my, uh, on my MacBook. Fingers crossed. Hey, so Editor Garrett hopping in here several days later with a little bit of extra insight to this portion of the video that I didn't realize at the time when I was recording it. So even though, like I said, Apple does a pretty good job of still supporting the iPods, like the 30 pin models and even the later Lightning versions, and even Firewire, they still support all of those. But for some reason, modern Mac OS struggles with iPods like the Shuffle that use the headphone jack as a data and power interface. Because the old Shuffle, the one that just uses a USB plug, works perfectly on every Mac, all the newer ones that I have, everything. But later on, after I finished up this video, I tried using the iPod Shuffle on an old power book, actually sitting right there on the table behind me, that little guy. I tried using that, which has iTunes on it, just an older version of iTunes and an older version of macOS, and the iPod Shuffle showed right up. It accepted music with zero problems, so while Apple Music and Finder still identify iPods, if they use the headphone jack interface, it's kind of hit or miss whether they know what to do with it. And at this point, when I loaded up this you know, iTunes on my PC and it showed up and worked, I probably should have taken bigger note of that, but I didn't. But either way, I know that now, and I'm probably gonna do a video a little bit later just talking about my experiences with an iPod Shuffle in 2024, but for now, lesson learned after this video was done. So just wanted to hop in here and give you all that bit of information. Okay, it has been far, 
far too long now that I've been working on this, but I didn't get the error when I pulled this out. I didn't put the headphones in first. I just hit play after turning it on. In theory, in theory, we should be good to go because I didn't get a firmware error or anything like that. So I'm going to put these back in and I'm going to just for giggles, put it back on. All right. Let me make sure it's turned on. And this is going to sound, I guarantee you this is going to sound bad. Let's go. Oh, let's try a bassier song, hopefully. It has stereo. That's a positive. Yeah, I know exactly how these songs are supposed to sound. I'm listening to Skyhawk Drive, which is an old band that I used to listen to a lot. Because I know exactly how these songs are supposed to sound, and uh, this ain't it. You can barely hear the bass. It's, uh, uh, it's unfortunately about what I expected from these headphones. I mean... You know, this is what Apple shipped back in the day. You want to hook something else up if you have these, which nobody does anymore. I mean, they haven't made these since uh, since the small fourth gen iPod, I don't think. Uh, maybe they were shipping with the Nano, the last Nano, but yeah, these are not... These are not a pleasant listening experience, to say the least. This was a fun little experiment that turned into way more than I thought it would ever be. Um... <laughs> In all told, this iPod is really what put the iPod Shuffle on the map. Like, you know, the original iPod Shuffle was just a USB thumbstick with some buttons on it and a headphone jack and like a little slider on the back to pick what you wanted to listen to. That was really it. Nothing crazy. And then this was where Apple really refined it. And then, of course, they went a bit too far and then they brought it back with this. And even this isn't as well designed as this was because this guy, like I mentioned, gives you the ability to pinch this big section near the side without pressing the buttons. And this, well, got rid of that little side. So when you pinch it, you're kind of potentially pressing fast forward unless you really make an effort to. So yeah, I mean, this is a really cool iPod. And again, this thing means so much to me in terms of my original one being the first Apple product that I ever owned and the memories I have with this, which again is why I've never gotten rid of it. But having one that works again in a color that I never had before and having one be brand new now that I've kind of sorted out some of the issues but still have more issues to figure out, this is kind of cool. I'm probably going to let it just live in its box for a while before I go messing with this again. But it is very cool to have one again, and I'm super, super glad that I was able to at least mess around with it, even if it did make me want to pull my hair out at certain points. But with that being said, thank you all so much for sitting through this video. It has been a blast on my end that became irritating towards the end, but stuff happens. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments, do you all have any like fond memories of technology from your past, like your first iPod, your first phone, first game console, anything like that? Leave some comments down below. And um, I'm going to keep hunting now. I'm kind of addicted to uh, opening up some of these older products uh, and devaluing them immediately. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that if you did like this kind of content. Uh, I don't do this style too often, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, definitely leave a like. And if you want to see videos like, I'm going to be doing an entire video using one of these guys, this 2015 MacBook Air. So subscribe if you don't want to miss content like that. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your patience. Hopefully it was entertaining and I will see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.